Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Directions Mag Geospatial Webinar Program, sponsored today by Geocortex. I'm Barbara Duke, Managing Editor here at Directions Magazine with our assistant webinar producer, Lynette Qualia. If you have any questions about your connection, just drop us a note in the chat. We'll do our best to help you. Special thanks to the geospatial community for being loyal to us for more than 20 years. Stop by directionsmag.com often to read the news articles and, of course, catch more webinars. We are standing by to take your questions. Type those into the question box at any time during the webinar. If you see something that you like, snap a photo of your favorite screens with the little camera button. We are recording today, so keep an eye on your inbox for more information. We also appreciate your participation in the polls and post webinar survey, and we'll have certificates of attendance if you need those. Today, we are exploring how you can control your GIS apps and optimize performance. Welcome to Aaron Oxley. He's here to help us be more efficient with GIS apps and uh, has a couple of demos for us to show us how it's done. So Aaron, welcome. We are glad to have you with us today and uh, excited to learn more about apps and optimization. Thank you very much, Barbary. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I'm Aaron Oxley, as Barbary mentioned. I'm a technical sales specialist here at Geocortex. Um, before I go any further, a couple quick notes. Um, number one, uh, given the current situation in the world, um, obviously a lot of plans have changed. So I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I think it's really nice that even with all the cancellations and postponements, we actually get to do this. Uh, it does mean, though, that I'm working from home, so you may hear some meowing or horns honking, who knows, uh, but I'll do my best to stay focused, and hopefully you can do the same. Uh, so being a technical sales specialist, um, I do a lot of different things, but I spend most of my time teaching people about Geocortex, uh, how our products work, how to get the most out of them, uh, whether that's the most power or the most flexibility. It usually all comes down to one thing, though, the most value, uh, and that's what today's webinar is going to focus on optimizing your GIS to improve value, to, to improve the return on investment in GIS. And now if you haven't heard of us before, the short version is that Geocortex helps you accomplish even more with Esri's ArcGIS. Um, a bit more about us. We've been around since 1999. Uh, we have over 1,400 customers across the globe and we're an Esri Platinum partner. Uh, in a nutshell, Geocortex is web GIS software that gets deployed right in your Esri stack and it helps you and your users uh, get more value out of GIS. So today uh, I want to show you a couple things in particular. We call them the Geocortex admin bundle because they're made for administration. Uh, these are the products that are intended for people behind the scenes making things happen. So Geocortex analytics gives you visibility into your GIS. It gives you the information to make the, the right decisions, the most informed decisions. And Geocortex access control gives you fine-grained control over your GIS. So the goal here today is to teach you how these tools can help optimize your GIS and make your users more successful. So uh, Geocortex analytics, it's all about visibility. It's a monitoring system that gives you full visibility into your GIS. Uh, there are other tools out there. Um, application performance management software is the collective term. And they can tell you if your CPU is running high or if a URL isn't available. But there's not many that are really made for GIS. There are a couple. Um, one's for the back end, one's for the front end. Neither do both. And they're quite technical as well. They're not really made to be used by GIS people. Uh, so analytics. Um, there's three categories, really, of the benefits. Uh, number one is ensuring peak performance. Number two, keeping your users happy. And number three is avoiding interruptions. So one of the ways that it does all this is by helping me understand what's happening right now. Are my services responding uh, in a decent amount of time? Uh, how many people are currently signed into my app? How many credits do I have left in my ArcGIS online? Analytics has all this information available for me, pretty much whatever I could need as a GIS administrator, and it's easy to find what I'm looking for. It also allows me to examine changes over time. And maybe that's how many users have accessed my app this week or this month, um, or what services are becoming more popular over time or less popular. And how has that popularity affected response times? So analytics has the answers to all these questions and it helps me make better decisions. 
And lastly, staying on top of issues. We talked about what's happening right now and understanding that through analytics, but I don't want to have analytics up all day. So I can set up alarms. Um, for example, if a service takes longer than 15 seconds to respond. And those alarms can trigger emails or text messages or both to let me know what's happened and I can act accordingly. Secondly, added the ability to run batch scripts when an alarm don't have time to get into that today, but if you're curious, um, I'm always excited to talk about cool stuff. Just let me know. Uh, my contact info will be up at the end of the webinar. So let's get into a demo. I'll start with analytics. I uh, will just uh, sign in here. You'll notice it's an ArcGIS identity sign in, and this is the standard setup. It's a nice little utility that ships with analytics right out of the box, so I don't need to go to my IT team and get them to add a new layer of security. That option is available if I want, but it's not necessary. Now, the first page that we see here is the summary page. Um, on the left, we have all the current active issues. So each of these panels represents an alarm that's been triggered. We have the type of alarm, disk space available on this one, and then the name of the resource, the type of the resource, and on most of them, uh, the name of the parent resource, but this last one, it's a host server, it's a top level resource, there is no parent. On the right side, these two charts are summarizing the last 48 hours of activity across my GIS. This is all the alarms on the top chart and below a summary of all sessions in all of my applications. Now, taking a look around the rest of the interface, we have a couple more tabs we're going to dive into. Uh, then in the top right corner, we have a link to configuration, a link to sign out, and my dashboards. Uh, in analytics, dashboards are about what you'd expect. They're collections of panels, um, charts, and tables that I often want to see together to visualize the important information immediately. Uh, this is where all that happens in my dashboards. For now, though, um, let's go dig into these other two tabs. So you'll remember that I mentioned how analytics helps you understand what's happening right now, as well as examining changes over time. Uh, you've probably already figured it out here. Status is what's happening right now. Trends is where I can examine the changes over time. So let's take a look at the status tab. I see a list of resource categories on the left-hand side here. Uh, each of these is collapsed. If I open one up, I can see all the resources of that type. Uh, there is a lot here. Like looking at these geocortex applications, this is our demo environment, so there is certainly uh, a lot going on. Uh, but I can use this filter feature to narrow it down. So there's the resource I want. I'll select that one. And this is my ArcGIS online organization. Um, I've got some basic stats, uh, the status of my alarms, information on the services that are available, uh, and then the service servers where those services are hosted. Um, I've got a, a ton of information here, all my web maps broken down by how they're shared and the underlying connections, item summaries broken down by type, everything that lives in my ArcGIS online. I've got a ton of other information here. Unfortunately, we won't have enough time to go into each of these panels today, but you get the idea. There is a ton of information available here. Um, let's go take a look at an ArcGIS server. I'll clear my filter out here, and I'll expand ArcGIS servers. We just have the one currently configured. And I'll jump over to the Trends tab. So you'll notice we now have a time slider over here on the right, and it's got a calendar picker as well for more specific time frames. And all of our panels are showing data for the given time frame. So I'll go to last week to get a better sampling of data, and these panels repopulate. Uh, the first one here, service usage and performance, it's definitely the most popular when it comes to ArcGIS servers. We're looking at all of the services, uh, what type of service, total requests, unique users, information about the response times, alarms, errors, warnings. Um, and if I click on one of these services, we can actually get a whole lot more detailed information on this service in particular. And then uh, I can use the breadcrumb to get back to the entire server again. Now, um, let me come down to a panel with a chart. Uh, here, service usage. 
So all the charts in analytics can be adjusted to include more fine-grained information depending on the time frame selected. We're looking at one week's worth of data, so I can refine it from daily down to hourly data points. If I was looking at a larger time frame, I'd have the option of weekly or daily data points. It's all relative. Uh, so scrolling down again, we have a ton of information available. Um, we've got lots of different stats on usage and performance. Uh, we've got a heat map of the most popular times of day, uh, process usage for CPU and memory, alarms, errors, uh, warnings, and it's all broken down in meaningful ways. So it's easy to filter and sort and adjust these charts to get exactly what it is I'm after. So let's say I'm a GIS administrator um, for a mid-sized organization, maybe 50, 100 users, something like that. I'm new to the organization. Uh, I've been told GIS has been cobbled together over the years. And one of my first tasks is to review the entire system. My new boss is probably worried about a few things. Um, number one, probably resources and performance. With a GIS that gets built as needed, things often get a bit unorganized. Um, and often, you know, nobody knows what's running on the servers. So maybe our servers are overloaded. Maybe they're idling all day. My new boss wants me to find out if maybe we can take a look at the usage of CPU and memory across these servers and maybe free up some resources or save costs, uh, maybe make some adjustments to improve performance. So let's take a look at our servers. We have four configured. Uh, let's take a quick look at the CPU and memory for each and see if there's room for improvement. So the first one here, uh, looks like the CPU is hovering around 70%. That's pretty high. And if I switch this to max, I can see it hits 100% every day. So it's definitely high. Uh, I'll scroll down to memory. And we can see there is 16 gigabytes total. And it looks like less than half of that is being used. So that's fine. Now this second server. We can see the CPU usage is hovering around 20%. This one's underutilized. So let's take a look at the memory. This one is at about 50% as well. So that's fine. Now our third server. This one also appears to have a lot more processing power than it needs. It's only at about 20% utilization. And we'll take a look at the memory. A bit higher than the others, but again, this looks fine. Um, so this last server. Oh, the CPU here is quite high. So this could definitely be causing performance issues. Let's take a look at memory. Memory here is also doing okay. So these are all virtual machines. Uh, it makes it easy to reallocate resources, and that's pretty common these days. Um, I can now go back to my manager and recommend that we take some of the virtual CPU cores dedicated to these two underutilized servers and assign them to these overworked servers to improve performance across the board. Easy win. So next up, um, my boss, one of the more common things is freeing up ArcGIS identities. So we've had a few admins uh, and issuing identities wasn't always organized or even tracked. And now we have a new department that wants to start using GIS but we don't have enough identities available, uh, but we think there's probably some people out there who could give theirs up. They have identities that aren't being used, so let's try to free some up. And we're now looking at our ArcGIS online organization again, and I'll scroll down to this user activity panel. I'm gonna remove the sorting by username, and instead we'll sort by items created in ascending order. Uh, then to be even more sure, we can also sort by the number of items requested, so here are some users with zero items created, zero items viewed in the last week. So I might go to these people and ask if they still need these identities. Um, I suppose if I don't get any volunteers, I could go to a longer time frame to find out who hasn't been active this month or even this year. Um, if everyone is active, that's probably a good thing. So while we're here though, uh, maybe I wanna clear up some clutter, tidy things up for these new users. Uh, the next few panels, maps, layers, apps, data files, and tools, uh, usage on each of these over the given time frame. 
So I can use these to find out what are the least used items and remove them myself or contact the owner to confirm. I'll do the same thing. I'll remove the sorting by name and instead I'll sort by views. Uh, and I could even add a secondary sort again, maybe date modified. Yeah, and we can see there 2016, 2017, zero views in the last week. These are definitely some unnecessary items that we can clear up. So now my manager's happy. We've got the servers performing better by reallocating some resources. Uh, we freed up some identities so we can onboard these new users. Um, next up, maybe my boss has pointed me to a developer. Developer heard about analytics. Uh, they're interested in getting more info about usage in an app they developed and how it's performing. So, um, in this case, what I might want to do is use a dashboard to get some information to them, summarizing the activity and the performance on a monthly basis. So up here in my dashboards, I'll click add new dashboard and let's call it developer Dave's dashboard and we'll click create. So we can now see the dashboard in the list but we haven't added any panels. So it's just gonna be a blank page. Let's go add some panels. Uh, I will start with the application itself, this damage assessment app. Uh, this first panel, sessions by visitor type, that sounds like a good one. So we have the dashboards icon in the top right corner. You can click here and select the dashboard we want. And that's been successfully added to the dashboard. Let's scroll down and see what else may, we may want to include in this dashboard. Um, peak times, that looks good. Let's add that one. And concurrent sessions, that'll be useful. And you get the idea. But this isn't very interesting, so I've already created something ahead of time that includes uh, all the panels that I think might be relevant for this developer. Uh, damage, assessment, and dependencies. So I've got this configured the way I like. It's important to note that the dashboard remembers all these settings. I've got data from last month. The session, sessions panel is showing daily data points. Uh, my users are sorted by total sessions. And then we have IP addresses, uh, service usage specifically for the geometry service, uh, then CPU and RAM. And again, note that these panels are set to show the max values and the dashboard remembers this whenever I come back. So with everything configured the way I like, I can now open this dashboard once a month and use the export dashboard to PDF button. And I have a report that I can provide to that developer with all of the information that they need. Nice and easy. Um, we are already past halfway though, so let's go and get into access control. Um, Geocortex access control. So this is a standalone uh, web-based product that provides fine-grained access control for your ArcGIS services. So it is specifically designed for ArcGIS services and going beyond what's available within ArcGIS server security. Uh, saving time and money is definitely one of the major goals with access control. Uh, we've seen organizations that have struggled with custom development and SOIs. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and in the end, money. The costs vary, but it's it's really a hole in the pocket from day one. Uh, and I think this last one's the biggest one, though. Making it easy to understand and control the access. Permissions are not easy to understand, um, especially when they need to be fine-grained. But with access control, it's all visualized in a way that makes it easy to understand and to configure that access. Uh, where it gets really powerful though, is that you can't just, is that you can do more than just assign permissions at the service level. Uh, you can go down to the layer level or right down to specific fields. Uh, and from a different angle, you can secure certain features based on attributes. We'll look more at that later. It's definitely one of the coolest parts of today's webinar. Uh, some highlights for access control though, the need to know stuff. Um, it's a web-based designer, a web administrative interface, so you do need to install it on a server, but there's no desktop installs required. There's no program living on everyone's computer. They just open up a browser and go and start administrating, designing those permissions. Always good news for the IT side of things. Uh, ArcGIS server services. So it does not apply to open source layers. Uh, it doesn't apply to tools, apps, et cetera. 
It's ArcGIS Server Services. Uh, it's also important to know that the security is right on the ArcGIS services, so it works in any app. It doesn't matter where those requests are coming from. Now, what this one's getting at is that it's not authentication. Uh, it's also not user management. It's designed to be permissions only, not your entire security solution. It's controlling access, kind of in the name there. Um, all this fine-grained security, super useful. Uh, especially as the world we live in gets more and more security focused, but it's not very exciting. Uh, it's necessary, yes, but this is the part that gets people excited. It's the ability to actually improve your GIS, to make your GIS more efficient by streamlining your services and apps and giving your users exactly what they need and only what they need. Um, okay, sorry for all the slides. I know that's not what we're here for. I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page, speaking the same language. Uh, let's take a look at access control. Um, so again, like analytics, I'm using an ArcGIS identity sign-in. Same idea. This is part of the standard setup. Uh, you just go through a, a post installer configuration tool that sets it all up, and then you control who has access from an item in your portal or ArcGIS online and who that's shared with. So I'm signed in. Uh, this is where we start. On the left, I've got this help button, which gives me a few links to key sections in our documentation as well as a link to the community uh, where I can ask questions, share ideas, uh, get updates from Geocortex and other users. Great spot to be. Uh, down here, I can see that I'm signed in with the technical sales accounts and I can sign out, pretty basic. So this instance of access control, it lives on a server in my environment. Uh, it needs to be installed on the same server as my ArcGIS server uh, or my web adapter, actually, if they were separate. Uh, the installation is really simple. It's just a wizard. It walks you through the initial config step by step. Takes a few minutes, maybe five. Um, so we're looking at a couple servers here, web adapters actually. Uh, I am going to pick the second one, this portal dmarklatitudegeo.com, and I can see the root of the REST endpoint now in this next column. If I click the More button and open ArcGIS REST Services directory, I can see in a new tab where I am. Uh, we're only looking at a couple of those folders, but after logging in, I can see all three of those folders and this one service. Now, if I go back, um, if I select one of these folders, the next column gives me the contents of that folder. And if I select one of these services, the next column populates with all the layers that are included in that service. Again, uh, we have the option to go to the REST endpoint directly from any level. But now we also have the option to remove all permissions from this service, uh, and that includes any downstream permissions, anything at the layer, field, or feature level. Uh, let's go downstream and take a look. So if I select this service requests layer, the next column gives me the option to add security on this layer. Before I add any permissions though, let's go take a look at this data on a map, in an app. Uh, this is the Web App Builder application. Very simple one, but if we zoom in, and I'm just gonna get in here a little bit. So I'm gonna pull up the layer list, and turn everything on, and we can see that I currently do have access to everything in this service. So let's go back and give it a try. I'm just gonna turn these off. And on service requests, we'll click the add button. I'm asked what user or group I want to assign permissions to. Um, let's start simple. We'll apply to a group, all users. Okay, and let's say denied. So I'll save that and I'll go back to this application. And now without even refreshing the page, as soon as we zoom in or out, Access control is already filtering those web requests. And just like that, the service requests are no longer available. Now let's go back to the access control designer and let's clear that out. We'll save again and let's go a bit deeper. Let's go at permissions at the field level. So if I click the fields button here, I can now see all of the attribute fields for this layer and I can assign permissions for each individual field. So for instance, um, maybe I don't want phone and email to be visible to the public. That's private information. So I'll add a permission for phone and we want all users again. 
and we'll say denied. Then I'll select email and same thing, all users and denied. We'll save that. And now when I go back to the application and do a zoom, I can see service requests because we removed that layer level permission. But if I select one, I can't see the phone or email. Perfect. There's a catch though. Um, my dispatcher uses this app and they do need to see the phone and the email. So I've got this tool here just to find out who I'm signed in as, site admin. Uh, so let's say site admin is our dispatcher. Let's go back into access control and we're, we'll configure access for them. So I will select phone and then I'm going to click the add button to add another permission. And I'm gonna switch this to look up users and then I'll look up my dispatcher, site admin, there they are. And visible is correct. So let's do the same for email. We'll add, we'll look up site admin and visible again. So let's save that and jump back to the app. I will zoom and select a service request and voila, we can now see the phone and email values. So uh, let's go back into access control and let's go back up to the layer level. We can also assign permissions based on attribute filters. So attribute filters allow me to limit access to features based on their attributes. Um, for instance, my dispatcher site admin should only be able to view unassigned service requests. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna add an attribute filter, and this is for site admin. And now we have a box where we can enter a filter condition. Let's go with status equals unassigned. And we can save that. And now if we go back to the app and zoom again, and we can only see the unassigned service requests. They are the purple symbols. So those are just a few ways that access control can be used to control permissions for your GIS data. We're keeping it pretty light today given the amount of time that we have, but I hope it gives you an idea of what you can do with access control. It gives you the power to assign fine-grained permissions on the fly in an easy to understand visual layout. So this is just really scratching the surface of what can be done. Um, but if I piqued your interest, if you want to know more, we love showing this stuff off. Uh, just reach out and we can set up more in-depth demonstration. Um, but for now, just this one more slide that I wanted to show you guys, uh, some additional resources. So at geocortex.com, you can find information on analytics and access control from the products link in the top bar. Uh, our YouTube channel is also a great way to learn more about our products and how to, uh, how to get started with them all the way into more advanced topics as well. Uh, docs.geocortex.com is our documentation center with really in-depth information. And then uh, just a couple of email addresses to contact us, info at geocortex.com for general. If you have something about today's webinar and want to contact me specifically, that's my email address there. So I think that's it. Um, we have got the timing pretty good. I'll invite Barbara <laughs> to come back and wrap things up. Yeah, I think I might have gone a little bit over my time. Sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> I love okay. talking about this stuff. It's it's hard to stop. Yeah, the, these are great tools, um, and they, they seem pretty straightforward to use. And I know that's always helpful for a lot of folks. Um, all right, so uh, we appreciate everyone being here, and um, again, if you have any questions, we'll encourage you to continue to type those in to the question area there. We do have uh, a few coming in. Um, all right. So uh, I think one question that I'm seeing in, in a various ways here real quickly is in terms of the things that they would need to accomplish this. Um, I know that you mentioned server. I mean, are these do these come together as a, a package? Is that something that they, how does that work? 
That's correct. Yeah. So um, analytics and access control are they're, they're products that you can get on them on their own, uh, but we've combined them as the admin bundle. Uh, okay. And that's a way that you can get both of these products together. Um, I don't know about pricing. I'm a technical person, so I oh, won't go yeah. there. But uh, yeah, we, we do bundle them together to, to make it a bit better for people. Um, and I'm just scrolling through the questions here. Uh, as far as what you need for uh, analytics or access control, um, just a server and an Esri environment. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really all there is to it. Uh, both of these products are designed to work in a variety of environments. We know that everyone's GIS is a little different and right. we built these products so that they're dynamic enough to work in any environment as long as it's Esri and you have a server where the product can live. Perfect. All right. If there's any other questions that uh, I haven't gotten to, I believe that Barbary can get these to me and I'll get Absolutely. back to you all later. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll, so I'll do my best to answer all these questions uh, sometime this week, hopefully in the next couple of days here. Wonderful. Well, uh, thanks so much, Aaron. We really appreciate you taking the time to show off uh, the, the cool apps and encourage everyone to keep an eye on their inbox. We have recorded this and we'll share this um, with you. Also, any resources and those kinds of things, we'll be sure and point those your way as well. We appreciate your feedback on the survey. Um, thanks again to Aaron. Special thanks to Shane and Paul for their support in the background as well. We hope to see you at more geospatial webinars. Um, go make it a great day. Tell a friend about Geocortex and Directions Magazine. And thanks for being here.